everybody, welcome back. My name is Mel and today we're going to be talking about my final Knock It Out November wrap-up check-in. First of all, how was it already November? I don't know. Second of all, I don't think I did as well in the second half of the month as I did the first half of the month. So let's find out, shall we? Okay, so I think my last check-in ended with Blood of the Chosen and Gallows Hill. If it ended around that point, I really have not read hardly anything in the last half of the month. Wow. I did not realize that I had done that poorly in the second half of the month. Just looking at this, I think I only read like four books maybe in the second half of the month, which for me is not a lot. I typically read somewhere between seven and ten books a month. So I'm just going to pull up my Goodreads to make sure that I haven't missed any. And I don't think I have. So let me go back and check my last video to find out where we left off last time. Okay, so I figured it out. I actually ended with Emperor of Ruin, which is kind of off a little bit on my spreadsheet, which is why I got a little bit confused. So I did complete that. I don't know if I updated you guys. I don't think I had actually started it yet when we talked the last I finished it. I finished the Burning Blade and Silver Eye trilogy and it was a great end to the trilogy. I still had a few problems with it as I expected to. It was not a perfect end. The ending was a little bit rushed. The group did get split up for part of the book which I preferred it when they were together in the big finale. It just in a lot of ways didn't feel like a huge finale to me. But I still enjoyed it. I still had a good time with the characters. Kit deserves the world. And I had a great time with the world building. So this one came out at a four star. Solid read. It checks off an arc and a anticipated book and completing a series. Then I don't know that I mentioned A Crack and Sacrifice by Katie Robert. This was our unofficially official book club pick for the month of November. It knocks off an indie book and to continue a series. This is the second book in the deal with a demon. It was not my favorite. I liked, I don't know, technically it was better written than the whatever the dragon's bride the first one but just didn't really have as much fun with it it didn't have as much smut as i anticipated it would and it tried to be a little bit too hard hitting i think for what it was and the page count that it had so i'm not rating that one but eh, is i okay and then moving on to what i think are new books of darkness and light by ryan k hill i will be honest i have soft dnf this one it is a very classic fantasy chosen one trope. Boy and his friends go off on a quest. Boy finds dragon egg, becomes chosen one, battle ensues kind of situation. It was not working. I probably got 65% of the way through this before I decided to put it down and it just wasn't working for me in the moment. I do plan to pick it back up and finish it because I probably will continue in the series. I haven't completely decided yet. A Blood and Fire was a mediocre three-star read. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. The Fall, which is the prequel or not a prequel, I guess technically it is a prequel, but the novella that comes in between book one and book two, thoroughly enjoyed. It was a four and a half star. So I was really, really hopeful for this second book. And I think where the second book failed was that it was just way too long. It's 828 pages and it is, I'm not getting it out, it's too hard, but it's this middle one right here. It was way too big. There are too many things happening yet nothing happening all at the same time. It's like the author thought that he had things that needed to happen in his head and things that needed to point A to point B to point C, but there was nobody that went back behind him and was like, okay, but you've already said this. You've already explained that. We don't have to do that again. Can we shorten this part? Feels a little bit repetitive. And so therefore it ended up being entirely too long. The battle scenes were lasting like 40 pages and it was just redundant in a lot of ways. And I wasn't overly, I wasn't invested enough in the characters and the plot and the world building for the redundancy not to annoy me. Again, I do think I'm going to try and finish it out because the series has a lot of potential and I know that there are so many people that love it, but it wasn't working for me. Um, and then we have A Furies of Calderon, which is the first in the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher. This one was my 
which is where we pick from William, but Emma also really enjoys the series. Rachel really enjoys the series. And it was a good time. I switched from Of Darkness and Light to Furies of Calderon. And I was instantly more engaged and wanting to pick up the book. So I do think it was book, not slump on my part. Furious of Calderon is about a young boy who is kind of living on this farm. He does not have furies and he is the only one that he knows of that does not have furies. The furies are not well explained and that was one of my critiques. I'm assuming that that's supposed to be kind of a known to the world mystery that we uncover with the characters as we go, but I would have liked a little bit more explanation and kind of what they're capable of rather than they seem to be capable of anything. There didn't seem to be a limit to it, which was slightly aggravating. And then we have a cursor who comes into this town and she is working for the king as a messenger, but also a spy. And that part again was not well explained. I actually had to look that up to figure out exactly what a cursor was and why there was a little bit of prejudice against her. I enjoyed this one. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. The pacing was not the best. I felt like it was really really slow in the beginning and then we hit the halfway point and it was just action-packed and I would have liked a little bit more, I don't know, um, more steady pacing. The battle scenes in this one I have been told are quite long and I did find that to be the case in this book. I don't know, there are a lot of things about it that just should not have worked for me, but it did and I will be continuing in the series. It got a high three star and that feels about right to me. Next up we have Small Miracles by Olivia Atwater. This one I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about with you because you will be seeing it in one of my SPFBO vlogs coming to you very soon. But it was the first pick for my SPFBO blog and or vlog and I enjoyed it. But that's all I'm going to tell you. So that one does cross off an indie book and an anticipated book. I would say that Furies of Calderon definitely crosses off a anticipated book wasn't continuing a series because it was starting a series. Whoops. Um, wasn't an arc or anything like that. And then last but not least, we have Babylon's Ashes by James S.A. Corey. This is the sixth book in the Leviathan Wakes Expanse series. It does finish an arc, but there are technically still three more books to go in this series. Leviathan Wakes is a epic space opera about a man and his crew and there is this protomolecule that is causing people to be really, really sick, essentially. I don't know how to really explain Leviathan Wakes other than you have a crew and you have this vast universe and people that are prejudiced against one another based off where you're from. So you have the belt, which is kind of the outliers, the people that weren't raised on Mars or Earth. And then you have the Martians and you have the people from Earth. So you do have a lot of prejudices involved in this story. It does, it's very multi-perspective. Each book adds a different perspective and removes some of the ones from the book before. The only consistent POV that we have is Holden in this series. That is the thing that drives me up the wall. I want to get to know all of these characters and I want to really feel for them and get just really be in it. And when you're switching points of view every single book, it's very, very hard to get invested. I feel invested in Holden's crew completely, but it's because I've gotten to follow this entire saga through their eyes. I do see why they do it that way. It's to give you different perspectives into different parts of what's going on. This series is very politics heavy, but not in a militant kind of way. I guess it is in a militant kind of way, but I don't know. I just don't find the politics to be as engaging as I would like for them to be. Unfortunately, with Babylon's Ashes, it's a similar complaint that I've had from book three onward that it just feels disjointed from the series as a whole. And this one overall has been very, very slow to me. Typically, we get about 200 pages in and the plot takes off and I end up loving it by the second half, but I am almost finished with it and I'm still just, I won't say bored, but a little bit bored. And it's frustrating because this is supposed to be the closure, the epic battle, the finish to this main arc, and I just don't feel that right now. So this series as a whole, I think is going to be a four star series for me. I know I've still got a couple of books to go, but unless there's a drastic change, even though, what was it Caliban's War, the second book, may be one of my favorite books of the year the series as a whole just kind of took a little bit of a nosedive after that and I haven't cared as much about the new points of view and the side characters and because of that I haven't been as engaged in the story overall. 
So that one is going to continue a series and be an anticipated read. I buddy read that with my dad and Rachel and I am so far behind it is not even funny. So it's definitely been anticipated and it does continue the series. I'm sorry guys that this was not a little bit longer, a little bit more entertaining. I epically failed at the second half of the month. I lost my mojo. Now granted I did read some pretty hefty books. Emperor of Ruin was like over 500 pages. Um, of Darkness and Light, if I'd finished it, was 800, although I probably got a solid 600 in it before I decided to put it down. Uh, Furies of Calderon was nearly 700 pages. Babylon's Ashes is over 600 pages. So I did read some chunkers in the last half of the month, but just meant that I didn't have as much to talk to you guys about. But so I think if I'm looking at it correctly, and we take start from of darkness and light because I think I used crack and sacrifice in the last catch up emperor of ruin completed a series was an anticipated read and was a arc so that knocks off three goals of darkness and light was continuing a series I won't really say that it was much other than that. I guess it was a mood read because I didn't have to pick that one up. But then we have Furies of Calderon, which was a anticipated read. It was kind of a mood read too, but we're just going to put it in one or the other. Small Miracles, also an anticipated read and an indie or self-pub book. And then Babylon's Ashes is continuing a series and an anticipated read. So that is 10 goals, which means two books. So let me walk you through really quick what books I have purchased in the last half of the month. So one of them was Babylon's Ashes, which I'm not going to count because that's just one that I needed to finish out the month. Um, but I also bought, let me get through all of my presents that I've purchased, Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. This one is a epic fantasy that I'm hoping to get to buddy read with a few people really soon. It is part of a duology series. I'm not really sure. And the second book does come out in February, finally. This one was originally published in 2019, so it's been quite a long wait. And I'm really looking forward to that one. And then I also bought Leech by Huron Ennis, which is a gothic sci-fi horror that I've heard a lot of people talk about. It was on the Goodreads Choice Awards this year. I don't really know a whole lot about it other than that. I don't know how gothic sci-fi horror is going to play out, but I've heard it's good and it works and I'm really curious to find out why it works. So those are the two books that I bought because of the goals that I completed. That wraps up my Knock It Out November. I hope you guys had a good time this month. Did you participate in Knock It Out November? And if you did, how'd you do? Because I feel like while the first half of the month went way better than I expected, the second half of the month didn't, didn't go so well. Um, so I hope you guys did better than I did. And be on the lookout for my SPFBO vlogs. Those will be coming very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to connect with me a little bit more, as always, links to my Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads are down in the description. And if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.